Hey guys, this is the part where we'll be exercising our sewing skill. We are sewing the maxi dress we drafted in the previous video. If you have not watched that video, please click on the link above or in the description box to catch up with this work. My name is Kemi Morube and you're welcome to Kema Freak. Please sit back, relax and let's have fun sewing this lovely maxi dress. So these are the patterns we derived from the pattern drafting tutorial and I have cut out the patterns on fabric. For this piece, this center panel for the front, I added half an inch all round, making sure that I follow the shapes and I also inserted notches here to help me join the two sides together. So for this panel on the other hand, I have added half an inch here half an inch here, then one inch at the side, half an inch at the armhole. I also inserted notches here to help me when I'm joining these two sides together. Let's place this aside. So for this back panel, I have half an inch here. There's no need for allowance on the zip allowance side again. So I have another half an inch all around here, then one inch at the side. So that way it aligns with the one inch I use for the front. I also went ahead to cut out lining using the same fabric. I just wanted to use the same fabric. So I cut out lining pieces for all of the sides and I'll just be mimicking all that I will do on the bodies. I'll be doing the same thing on the lining. So first I'll be starting by fixing the dart. So the dart here is seven inches long. I'll just arrange my fabric very well and notch the position of the dart. They make a seven inches long dart, both on the main piece and the lining for the back. So here's what I have after sewing in the dart for the back. And I'll just set this aside. Let's work on the front a little bit. So this front pattern here, I need to mark out the pad and I'm just going like 3.5 inches above. 3.5 inches and this way. So I'm marking 3.5 inches all around so I can cut out the pad. For this other side, I'll match it this way. Now we're placing the pattern on this breast pad and I need to add half an inch along the bust line here. So this other side doesn't need um, same allowance. So once I'm through, I'll place a notch at the bust line here. Okay, so I'll do the same thing for this other one as well. Okay, now I'm done cutting out the breast pad and I'm just going to place each against the other. And in doing that, I will align, I'll make sure I'm using the sticky parts against the wrong side of the outfit and I will align the notches, okay? Then hold it with pin. Now I'm done pinning down the pad. I will move on to the ironing table to iron it into each other. Then we're attaching these two panels together and these two together, sewing along the bust line by half an inch.
I am done sewing the center and the side panels together for both the left and the right side and here I'm going to lay the lining on the main piece because I did the same thing on the lining then I'll be sewing that center seam and also the neckline closed I'll be sewing by half an inch I'll do the same thing for the other side as well seam sewn this is what I have I'll just go ahead to notch around the curvy parts of these just so my seam relaxes properly and I'll proceed to turn this piece inside out i'll do the same thing for the other side of the dress remember we have two sides for the front then i'll go give this a good press so for the back i'll lay the lining on the main piece and sew the neckline the regular way we sew neckline here i'm sewing by half an inch i will notch then top stitch on the allowance and the lining making sure that the allowance is towards the lining side of things i will be top stitching by about one eighth or one quarter of an inch to help the neckline relax properly so now it's time to attach the front and back piece together just so i don't get confused i lapped the two front pieces over each other so i'll know the exact back piece to fix to each shoulder so now we'll pick up the front shoulder and sandwich it between the back piece and the lining of the back just watch what I'm doing so I'm sandwiching the front piece between the main back piece and the back lining and I will be stitching this complex together by half an inch along the shoulder line so that will leave me with like a half an inch allowance so I'll just continue the same line through the armhole of the back Once I'm done sewing that seam, I'll go ahead to do what we usually do on curvy seams. I'll notch to help it relax. Then I'll turn the back piece inside out. I'll go ahead to iron it or to press it in. Then do the same thing on the other side. So I've done this for the both sides of the, the pieces. You can see it looks quite funny. So remember we created an overlap for this while we're drafting our pattern. So rather than just having it straight, it's like overlapping along the waistline. So I'll just lap it over each other. I added additional two inches to the front, the center front part of things so that we can lap it. So that means four inches over four inch on both sides. I hope you understand what I mean. So I just held that down with a pin so that I can also um, place the back over the front and sew down the side seams. So for the side seam, I raised the lining right there. We'll be attaching the front and back main piece and I'll just continue that seam on the lining as well. So what we're doing basically is sewing the side of the dress but because we want a neat finish in there, we're not just joining things, okay? We are sewing the lining separately and another seam for the main piece. I'm done with that and this is the skirt part of this dress. I have four yards of fabric right here and the length is 45 inches i'll still go ahead to extend the length because i want this really long but 45 does well for a regular outfit especially if you are about my height so for the front i had to separate the front from the back because i wanted a pocket at the side so normally I will have just done gathers all round without separating it but because of the pocket part. So I went ahead to cut out a curve for the pocket and the curve is 6 inches long and 1.5 inches wide. So I also have this piece of fabric which will be the pocket flap with one side mimicking the curve I have on the main fabric. The length of which is 12 inches long and 7 inches on fold. So in order to start sewing, I'll place the right side of this pocket flap over the right side of the fabric and sew that pocket curve by half an inch.
here i'm done sewing by half an inch along the pocket curve and i'll go ahead to notch 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 like we usually do then i'll flip the pocket flap over give this a good press and top stitch on this seam by one quarter of an inch a neat seam it has to be neat been there done that so now what i want to do is to sew the base and the side of the pocket and i'll be doing that on the pocket flap alone okay but then i don't want my seam to be showing on the outside i can do this and go use uh, a weaving machine to weave that edge but at the same time i'll just be using a french seam instead so instead of putting right side over the um the other <laughs> i'm placing the wrong side over the wrong side and i'll be stitching by about one quarter of an inch then i'll go ahead to trim off any allowance that wants to embarrass us <laughs> then turn it over and make another quarter of an inch seam on the same side that's the side and the base of the pocket flap so that way we have a neat finishing both on the inside and the outside of the pocket so that's done i don't know if you can see this properly but that's our pocket right there Once I was done with the pocket, I went ahead to attach the front and back piece together along the side. So we have a side seam for the gathers, okay? Now I want to explore a new method of making gathers and this is not what I'm used to really. But then I made, I'm made i making use of a hand needle and thread. I actually have a double thread here. So that's four pieces of thread, right? And I'll just be creating my gathers with this needle before going ahead to sew on the sewing machine. So I just felt this might be easier, even though <laughs> after going through the process now, I'm not very sure. But let's see how it goes. So basically, I'm just running a loose stitch on the fabric and drawing out the thread as I create this. <laughs> So I'll do this throughout the length of the fabric, that's throughout the 4 yards width of fabric I have. So you understand why I had to sit down here. <laughs> so once that is done, I'll pull that thread. I made it double so that it doesn't rip easily when I'm pulling. So it was very easy to pull actually. So um, I just pulled the, the thread so it created gathers till I got the length or the width of the gathers I was looking for, okay? Now I'm done creating my gathers and before I proceed to join the upper part and the skirt parts of this dress, I need to close up the zip allowance so I turned the lining over. That's, I'm putting the right side of the lining over the right side of the outfit and sewing by one quarter of an inch, just part of the um, part of the zip allowance so I'm true doing that here and I'm just spinning the skirt part onto the body's part of things to ensure that I kind of make the gathers even so that one part won't be fuller than the other I hope you understand so I've I pinned all through the waistline of both the upper and the lower bodies together and I went ahead to sew the two together by half an inch. Once I was done doing that, this is what I have. I actually treated both the lining and the main fabric of the upper bodies together. So we have this exposed seam right here. So I will go ahead to use the lining to close up that seam. So I'll be sandwiching, it's more like I'm sandwiching the upper bodies between this gathered skirt and the lining. So that way when I flip the lining over, it covers the same allowance right there. Once that is done, this is what I have. You can see how neat it now looks on the inside. And I went ahead to also close up the, the zip allowance of the skirt part. So that way we have the same inside like this. The next step is to go ahead to fix your zip. And this will be the final look or this is my own final look. 
what do you think guys drop a comment in the comment section i went ahead to wear this clothes for my birthday shoot like i told you in the previous video and it was so fabulous and african i paired it with a lovely gilly my students also made a detachable structured skirt using the same fabric so i also paired it alongside and it was heavenly Thank you guys for watching please give this video a thumbs up and drop a comment in the comment section it goes a long way guys it goes a long way thank you for doing that bye bye and see you in the next video